Hello everyone and welcome back to my Beyond History series in Kerbal Space Program 1.1.3. In this episode we're going to be handling a series of lunar missions. First of all we need to send a scanner over to the moon. There's a stock scanner and we need to find where the resources are on the lunar surface. Uh, next up we have a science lab mission to add a science lab to the station. And after that, I want to try out a new moon port resupply system using a Fiji rocket instead of the old Nico rockets. And this will be able to send a little bit more supplies than our old moon port resupply system. Uh, it's a little bit more expensive too. But anyway, we'll see how that works. It's, uh, I don't think we've launched a Fiji 21 before, and nor have we launched a Fiji 24 so these will be two new variants of the Fiji rocket. Still waiting on the Nerva Tug. We've been uh, moving up some of the other things ahead of the Nerva Tug because the Nerva Tug isn't uh, sort of an immediate thing that we need to handle. Uh, I've also built an ISRU test unit, and so that will be built eventually. And you can see here Lunapod A, that's the Gemini capsule as a lunar lander. So uh, two crew member lunar lander. And uh, somewhere in between all of this, we have a maneuver to handle with an ambassador mission. Remember, the ambassador missions are the missions to the outer planets, uh, the Sirius, you know, Uranus, Neptune, Pluto kind of thing. So we'll see which one that is. I don't remember which one. Though I think I might have renamed the Pluto one Pluto ambassador. No, but we've got a bunch of ambassadors here, so maybe I didn't. Okay, but we've got 7,000 science, so maybe it is a good time to take a peek at the tech tree to see how that is, uh, just in case uh, you were curious. So, we, uh, well, on engine technology, we've got mature Hydrolox here, but we do not yet have closed cycle Hydrolox engines, though I believe we're researching that. Let me just check. Yes, this node is already being researched. Uh, we have nuclear propulsion here, as you can see, and advanced stage combustion. We are researching mature stage combustion, which has RD-170. Um, yeah, so that is already being researched. Specialized construction, effective space planes. Uh, we haven't made too much use of that. Uh, I would prefer to have large space planes. So, well, why not? Okay, up, upgrade point added, and that node will unlock eventually. Field science, uh, we've got. Advanced motors we do not have yet, and I'll wait on that. Heavy command pods and specialized command pods. I believe somebody said that near future spacecraft go here, but I don't see a pressing need for that. I don't know. I, I do have a Dragon capsule that's supposed to be uh, in this install from the Tundra Aerospace thing, but I need to, or ten, Tundra Exploration, I mean. I don't know where that ends up, but that'll probably be our seven-person capsule or, you know, uh, the thing that carries more people than the Apollo command module. Though, of course, it doesn't have much living space. It's a smaller capsule, so we're going to have to make sure we give our Kerbals appropriate living space. Here we have Advanced Science Tech, which has the ISRU units from real ISRU, as well as my own modification on the stock ISRU refinery, except that's spelled wrong. Hmm. No, I don't think that's mine. That, that I think, was modified by, by uh, the USI colonization. Everything is modifying the ISRU units. It's very complicated. Uh, we've got specialized science tech here not being unlocked. Now, you might recall that I mentioned the colonization uh, sciences. And I think we're unlocking this long-term habitation down here that's already being researched. Beyond that, there's this colonization, advanced colonization. And you see there's nothing in there, but this loops back uh, to recycling. So, and recycling is super important. So we really need these recycling units to attack glycoport water purifier, Sabatier reactor, and stuff like this. Um... So we need to unlock colonization and advanced colonization, but we can't do that. Um, well, this says research, so uh, well, until we get advanced logistics, which is here. So we need to get storage technology, actuators. I'm, I'm pretty sure we're unlocking actuators already, but where the heck is actuators? Um, here. Yeah, we it is being researched. But so, in order to get our recycling units, we have to unlock this, this, 
this, this, this, and then get to that. And I don't know if there's any other tech. No, it's just straight like that. So, uh, so we will be putting our sciences to use. There's there's a lot of science that is necessary just to get to these recycling units. Yep. So don't worry. Uh, we're not like uh, plunging ahead with the warp engines yet or anything like that with our store of science. You've got other things to do. All right. So here we have our scanner probe on top of. A rather unique rocket and we're probably not going to launch this more than once this uh, uniquely American rocket Atlas Centaur Agena with four caster one boosters so this combination never flew in real life but I decided to give it a go here we'll see what happens I don't know how launch script is going to work with it I tried my best to get the staging right but we'll deal with the problems as they come all right, it is an interestingly staged rocket, the Atlas with the, you know, the booster staging after two and a half minutes or so. Uh, I forget what I said it to, but anyway, run scanner. We are lined up with the moon and everything. Okay, engine ignition and launch. That's a long pause. Okay, we're off. Very convincing. 1.7 G's on launch. Serious acceleration and everything, but the boosters don't last long. Okay, boosters trailing off. And separated. All good. I could stop the roll from wiggling just by activating SAS, but I don't want to throw it off or anything. Just in case. Oh, we have a uh, loss of performance in one engine? Uh, well, we've got the same specific impulse, it's just loss of thrust. Loss of thrust in one LRE9. I guess that's acceptable. We'll see what that does to our trajectory though, because that means that the boosters are going to be dumped when we're not going quite as fast. It's got to be a little bit complicated. Okay, booster staging. But yeah, now we've got a conundrum because we only have 0.7 G's, let's say. Thrust weight ratio of 0.7. And time to apoapsis is not as high as it needed to be. And this launch might fail. We might not be able to pick ourselves up. I thought with all the use we put the LR-89s to, they would have been a little bit more reliable, but it is not allowed in this phase to pitch up more than it is right now. Well, and then after this engine finishes up, we've got the Centaur stage, and that's not exactly a high thrust weight ratio stage I Oh, great. Now this has loss of performance, loss of thrust, and loss of ISP. This was a bad idea. This was a bad idea. We'll have to try this again with a different rocket. Ambitious, but rubbish. And no, that's not gonna work at all. Yeah, it's just going nuts now. Oh, great. Well, the payload doesn't exactly have a parachute on it, for obvious reasons. There's our probe. It, it's actually just uh, the scanner right on top of the Agena. There's no reason to do anything else. And we had uh, solar panels on the Agena and everything. Alright, well, we'll have to launch on a different launcher. We'll keep the Agena since that's important to the whole spacecraft, but... We'll have a different launcher at the bottom of it. Okay, so here we are with another try with the scanner, but this time we've got a much simpler rocket. In fact, this rocket only took six days to build because it only has two engines except for the Agena. And these are NK-33s. Basically, this is like an original Antares rocket with an Agena upper stage. 
I don't know if that's a good idea. Uh, interestingly, this uh, one stage uh, shaped a little bit weirdly, but that's because I I wanted to maintain the diameter while still fitting these two, so we had to have these little fairings, if you will. Uh, but this one stage has 8,268 meters per second of delta V, carrying a 7.6 ton upper stage, and it ends up with a 19 thrust to weight ratio. That's probably the biggest problem right there. But then again, we uh, we have to deal with the launch script, and I don't know how that's going to handle handle this situation. We'll see. But the point is that I wanted to build it quickly which meant not having a second stage before the Agena stage and that's why it's got the configuration it does. So let me edit scanner which is the launch script for this mission and I'm gonna copy in a version of the launch script that doesn't have those special stagings like the booster staging that the Atlas rocket needed and hopefully I've done everything right. We'll find out run scanner at least it only takes uh, six days to build it it's fairly cheap because of only two engines okay um, this time I will put on SA uh, can I put on SAS there we go to make sure it's not constantly wiggling those engines Another consideration is whether, because of the high thrust to weight ratio, this will eventually heat up too quickly in the atmosphere. It'll be going too fast in the lower atmosphere, I'm not sure. Okay, 43 kilometers, 1500 meters per second, 3.5 G's. Ah, uh, boy. It's gonna get hot. Let's hope it uh, climbs quickly enough. Well, it does throttle down, that's nice. Because we had reached 4 G's, it throttles down. And these engines do throttle. So, it won't be 19 thrust to weight ratio by the end, it'll be more like 10. Not quite as bad. Actually, I feel a lot better now. Oh, uh, except I hope we don't go over the burn time. They're rated for 4 minutes, and we've got 3 minutes and 20 seconds of fuel. So, we'll have to see. All right, well, we're above 100 kilometers, so we should be okay as far as the heating is concerned. Oh boy, I don't think this is turning it quickly enough to deal with the high thrust weight ratio. And frankly, having the Gina coast to Apwaps, this might have been a better idea. Oh yeah, it's got a high Apwaps now. It's just too powerful. Ooh, look at that. Ah. Well, all right. Probably this is not the best way to do this, so I'm going to cut this. The Gina has 15 total ignitions, so 14 left here. Uh, we'll just coast, or let's see if we can make a direct transfer, maybe. Uh, does not look like it. Uh, hold on, it's got a little bit of pause here. Um, we're, we're launching from here. That's our apoapsis, so no, we have to get into orbit first. So basically this is the probe. I mean, gonna deploy scanner and it'll all stick together. We are not gonna stage it. I should have uh, disabled staging here, but just in case sometime I accidentally put press spacebar for some reason. Let me just move those there. Oh, I wonder what the UDMH and Mon3 are. Are those these little vernier thingamajigs? Maybe. Yeah, I guess this flight pack has its own little engines, so that counts separately. 20 ignitions, by the way. Okay, let's plot for the moon. Okay, actually, let's switch that off and shut down. Let's see. Um, you know, for scanning, I don't know how close we need to be. And we probably need to tilt our orbit a bit, too. 
it's not great to be like that. So we're going to have a maneuver here. Go like that, go like that, and that'll be fine. Uh, we might need to be a little bit closer. Okay, so a correction of 102.4, and then we'll have to make orbit around the moon. I think we have enough fuel for that. We don't have anything else pending. Uh, we'll have constructed the science lab in four days. So after we reach the moon, we'll be just uh, rolling that out and launching that. No problems. So on we go. Okay, here we are with our correction burn. And that should be good enough. Um, actually, I want to... Oh, okay, there we go. Make sure our inclination is as polar as possible. But then again, our periapsis is going down. Let's leave it there. That's fine. Okay, headed to periapsis. Okay, so I think we'll just try and expend the, this stage's fuel and the remaining 300 that exists in this flight pack will be our station keeping fuel, if you will. So selling the fuel down and ignition. Unless it brings us too far down, of course. Now I do have ScanSat in here, though Maybe I don't want to have it. We'll see. But this is just a standard orbital survey. Well, I shut down anyway. And let's see. Perform orbital survey. It is sending data. Very slowly. And we will see the results. If it's real convenient, uh, there will be resources right at our base. Which would be nice. Okay, it says that the uh, oral survey data is done, 25 signs added. Um, doesn't show any alumina. Well, no, this is, they might, that, maybe that's alumina uh, right there. Let's see. Yeah, so patches of alumina are visible. Let's take a look here. Uh, not, uh, not a whole lot since that cutoff is high I and mean low. Actually, there is a lot over here. 1.4 percent. Hmm. Uh, let's highlight our existing base. Is that, that's it? Yeah, that's it. So here's our base. Let's see what we can get at our base. I think that's the most valuable thing. Okay, borate? No. Dirt? No. Exotic minerals? <laughs> they sort of ring around it and avoid it. Um, gypsum. We can get gypsum. Hydrate snow, carbonite a little ways away. Metallic ore no, metal ore same as the carbonite. Minerals same as the carbonite and metal ore. Monazite no, ore no. Ore is somewhat hard to come by on the moon. And since it's the basis for my ISRU, that's not great. Let's see if we can reduce the cutoff. Okay, there's some hazy bit of ore here and better ore concentrations down there. We might be able to send our, well, I am going to send my little ISRU unit here to drill for ore and we'll see how much we get. Um, rare metals, salt water. Basically, if you take a look at rare metals, minerals, metal ore, and carbonite. We probably should have moved our base a few miles to the west, huh? Yep, I would definitely say so. Otherwise, there's, well, salt water is not a surprise, but silicates, even at a 40% cutoff, there's no silicates. There is some substrate at our base. And lots of uraninite, which makes you wonder about the health of our <laughs> kerbals. But anyway, uraninite, we're good. We're good with the uraninite, and substrate uh, we can do. 
Okay, but the question is the ore, which is sort of the most important one. And uh, we'll we'll try and drill there and see. Otherwise, maybe... What's the cutoff down? It's still not great down here. Not the best place for it. Okay. So for now, I'm going to toggle overlay. Turn it off. And we've done this mission. Let's get on with the Lunar Lab 1. So here's the new science lab for Moonport 1 and it's being launched on a Fiji 24 which means two F1s and four J2s. A little bit expensive but we'll see how it works. So I've already loaded in the launch script and hopefully that'll work out. Here we go. The booster is light first. The J2s only light at altitude. They're useless on the ground anyway. Okay, ignition. And we're going up. Good. Very important to go up. I forget if this launch script has a condition. No, it doesn't. It doesn't have a we are okay to go up condition on the staging of the launch clamp, so I need to add that. The J2s will light one minute into the launch, and that's just straight up timed. Technically, the upper stage is also a J2, right? Yeah, I think so. So technically, it's a 25. It's got four here on the second stage, but still another one. I guess that's why it's a 24-1. Yeah, makes sense. Okay, whoa. The J2s are loud when they ignite. The J2s are louder than the F1s, which is not what I would expect. Anyway, they're ignited as planned. And at this altitude, uh, they have a uh, specific impulse. I think they start at 370, they're at 390 now. So it's a good time to light them. That way, because uh, they're burning right now, they use up some of their fuel. And the thrust to weight ratio of the core is not so low once we dump the boosters. Okay, booster separation. And our thrust to weight ratio is uh, 0.86 and going up slowly. We have a minute and 49 seconds to apoapsis, so that's okay. The roll thing is currently a bit annoying, uh, so I'll put SAS for now. It's lying about our delta V down there. Uh, we have 3,600 left in this stage, and then we still have to use a bit of the third stage to get to orbit. We don't have a whole lot of fuel on the payload to rendezvous with the station, so that's going to be a bit tough. There's a chance that this module will be sort of dead in the water around the moon and we'll have to send a tug out to get it. We'll see. One possible tug is one of the resupply vessels. We could just fill the resupply vessel up with fuel. It's got both docking ports, propellant only, as well as um, the Apollo command module docking port. And it could be used to tug this into the station. So there's the module in question. It's got solar panels. It's got its own fuel, of course. It is identical to the one that we sent to our Earth station, Spaceport 2. Okay, two seconds till the end of this stage. And separation. And the J2 is ignited. And we have 35 seconds left to apoapsis. We're starting out with uh, 0.7 Gs, so it's pitching up. This is going to be close, but we haven't had any engine failures, so despite the really high pitch, uh, hopefully we will get there. Alright, our time to apoapsis is increasing. We're at 21.3 seconds and going up slightly even though we're only at a uh, thrust weight ratio of 0.84 so everything is good. It will be safe even though the pitch is still a little bit iffy at 34 degrees. We'll take it. Should have enough to transfer us to the moon and everything. 
Might even have some few left over to uh, help with circularization, which would be helpful. That would be good and help us to dock with the fuel that we have left in the module itself. Okay, we are about to make orbit here. It definitely looks like we have enough to transfer to the moon after this. We need about 3,100 and we'll have 3,500. Okay, fuel is settled, so ignition. And we're on our way to the moon, but the inclination situation with respect to the station is complicated. Okay, end of the burn, and shutdown. Okay, we probably went a little bit too far there. So let's see what the situation is. Okay, let me recreate our mid-course adjustment. And all the mid-course adjustment is doing in this case is moving that ascending node to the periapsis. So it's still a pretty hefty 22.5 degrees, but at least we can do the burn for orbit at the same time as we're trying to correct that. And then we can, you know, once we've made orbit, we can go out to apoapsis and correct it there too. Okay, we are in lunar SOI and we still have our, our J2 stage. It still has one ignition and it says 313 meters per second remaining. Uh, despite the fact that the hydrogen has been boiling off, uh, you can subtly see a difference between the hydrogen fuel level and the oxygen fuel level, and it's got uh, three digits there indicating that there's some additional digit of boil off. There we go. Once I start time warping, it gives you the 0 0.05, which means that it's 0 0.005 per second. Yep, uh, but we could still make use of this, so let's do that. It's not nothing. We have captured. And... Well, I'm not going to wait for these RCS thrusters to do something. And besides, we're using those two, and that's not efficient. So let's separate. And then use these. Also ignite these engines. I'd rather like if our orbital period was below a day. Okay, our re relative inclination is down to 0.13, and now we're going to head back to periapsis. Uh, actually, we can bring that down a bit, can't we? That's a little bit too high. Since the next burn we're going to do is at periapsis to bring the apoapsis down, we would like to be closer to the moon uh, when we do that, ideally right at the orbit of the station. Okay, luckily we are basically able to fly straight in here, so let's control from here, make sure we're lined up. We didn't have to do any fancy maneuvering around the station, it so happened we were already facing the right way. And I'm gonna bring in the solar panels now. It might have been better to dock it in line with the station instead of where we're going to dock it, but that would require removing one of the spacecraft, the Orpheus spacecraft currently docked. And I'd rather not make this more complicated than it needs to be. Okay. And docked. Really, really big part of the station now. It's actually in volume larger than the station's habitable area was originally, so yep, rather significant addition. And that's a second successful mission for us. And the next thing is uh, trying out the new resupply sort of launcher, the Fiji 2-1 or 21. And that has some interesting, well, as one major interesting feature in that uh, to limit g-forces on the first stage it shuts off one of the first stage engines and yeah we'll see how that goes so uh, how, how much by way of supplies do we have here right now it's a hundred days 
So it won't really carry us through a lot of these later missions. So it'll be good to resupply the station now. Let's just get it over with. All right, let's launch this Moonport resupply. Sometime in the middle of its transfer to the moon, we're going to have to handle this maneuver node for the ambassador mission. But we'll be quickly back here to finish this particular mission off. Thanks to the VAB upgrade, we do now have a third build slot, so I'm just going to uh, get it up to the same speed as everything else. And then we'll add some more points to our R&D, which really needs to speed up if we're going to get anywhere with those recycling units. Um, okay, we can't really do anything more there. Close enough. And yeah, let's spend some cash. We've got 22 million funds after all. Let's see. Let's get to a nice round 20 million maybe on our funds and see where that gets us as far as science per day. Now we have gotten the advances for missions like the Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto flybys. So gotta keep in mind that we're sort of using those funds that we got for those missions. Also this position satellite in a stationary orbit of Jupiter which is a tricky mission to handle. Maybe I'll just uh, go to 21 million. Seems like we're already boosting it very well anyway. Okay 21 million and that brings us to 3.3 signs per day. And that means that closed cycle hydrolocks will be done in 112 days, long term habitation 300, actuators 46. We've got a lot of things going on. Alright, anyway, point is we now have three build slots, and this Moonport resupply mission is almost done. Let's get it out on the launch pad. Alright, so here is our first Fiji 2 1, and you can see the two F1 engines there. And I put fins on just to annoy people because it is a Saturnish rocket and they ought to have fins. I just decided that on a whim. It doesn't need the fins, but they're, they're present anyway. Okay, the launch script is loaded. We are lined up with the moon. Run Fiji 2-1. Okay, and we're off. The might of two F1 engines giving us a thrust to weight ratio at sea level of 1.4. Actually, I, I lied technically. Um, I turned off roll on these engines, so technically these fins do control roll. I didn't want the main engines gimbling to control roll, especially when it's wiggling about like that. More efficient with the fins. Okay, we are approaching 4 G's. And engine 1 shut down. So now, we are on just the single engine here. It needs to use some yaw control in order to help us out, but not too much. It's about 20-25%. So this is a sort of a thing that, uh, to the best of my knowledge, no launcher has been configured to do. We do get to a little bit above 4 G's by the end of this burn. And that could be solved if we just had something heavier on, on the top. Maybe a heavier upper stage. A Fiji 22 might be a little bit better. Though more expensive, so... Gotta keep that in mind. So 4.3 G's, let's call it. I think it's about 4.3 G's. Unlike the Fiji 11, we can't really recover this. It's definitely going too fast to be recoverable. So it just has to be expendable. And I do believe I have to manually do the fairings, unfortunately. And there's sort of the... Oh, come on game. The familiar little capsule shape that I use for my resupply vehicles. Except this time we have an, a Delta avionics unit here. The food, water, and oxygen tank is noticeably larger than the version that we have 
from before, the old Moon Core resupply mission. And this is actually smaller, we're carrying less fuel. Okay, we are making orbit and it is shut down. Okay, so we can plot for the moon. We have 3,450 meters per second. Everything seems to be correct. Yep, no problems. Okay, we have a pretty good maneuver for the moon ignition. The timing is just right so that we have a very low inclination with respect to the station. It really depends on where the moon is in its orbit, I think. And so there's not much we can do about it as far as timing, but uh, here we have only a 7 degree inclination compared to last time it was 22. Okay, it's sort of indecisive right now, but 7 degrees as promised. And we, we can figure things out once we get into Lunar SOI, so I'm just going to add the SOI change alarm. Which, it's not too sure when it is. Let's see, that's the four day one. That's, that's the one I want. That's the one I'm going with here. Five days is too long. Okay, but we need to keep track of the ambassador mission. Let's separate off from this stage. We don't really need to have that hanging around. Maybe that changed the SOI, let's see. Uh, well, it made it more solid. That's not, oh wait, but we're sort of far away. Let's see, sidestep the other stage. Okay, that's the 4 day one, that's the one we want. Okay, all good. And we are ready to turn to the ambassador mission and do that maneuver. Okay, we are here with the Ambassador mission, and this one is aiming to fly by Saturn first. And then, is it Pluto or not Pluto? This worries me, that we don't know where it's going next just yet. Hmm. But anyway, it needs to correct its course so that it's flying by Jupiter correctly so it passes by Saturn. So let's take care of that first. But hopefully we can fly by just uh, fly by more than Saturn because we definitely need to do Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto. We actually don't need Saturn right now. We've done enough around Saturn. We landed on Titan and everything. So yeah, Saturn is not the most pressing issue. And some minor correction of 96 meters per second, but let's keep an eye on Jupiter to see it's done right. Okay, and that's pretty much the maneuver. 0, 0.0 meters per second. Hopefully exactly as plotted. Let's see what's happening at Saturn. And maybe we should plot something further. Well, we'll have to wait until after Saturn to really get a sense of where we want to be with this and how to get that done. Right now it's too fidgety. But we've got an encounter there and after that can we maybe suggest some sort of thing with Neptune or is that too optimistic? The thing is, the flyby contracts, they really want us to get close. They want below 20,000 kilometers. Yeah, let's just leave it be. Okay, 12 meters per second, let's set the alarm. Um, that's the node. Maybe we should check it out, check up on it as it passes through the Jupiter system, just in case. Okay, we are approaching the moon and preparing to make orbit. Okay, we have a closest approach distance forming up here. Nope, okay, about 13 kilometers is what we've got there. Pretty good for the initial burn around the moon. Alright, well let's uh, go ahead and make the rendezvous. I'm approaching the station, we are currently 300 meters away, and I haven't decided what docking port to use. 
So let's uh, hop on over to the station and see what's free. I mean, I guess we could dock it in line with another one of these. No particular reason why not. Or we could dock at that Apollo docking system or dock here at this propellant only docking port. We've got our full range of choices. I guess uh, docking at that end will be easiest, but then it would uh, eliminate one appalled only docking port, and I don't quite like that. Uh, perhaps going for the docking port in line with that module. Okay, connection and docked. Okay, now how much do we have? Now we have 248 days for the space station. So that's basically... Oh wait, that's Moon Base 1. Hold on. Uh, 280 days for the space station. So now the station has more than the surface base. Next thing we will have to resupply is our base on the surface, assuming we don't bring the kernels back up, which we may do. But I'd rather keep the surface base continually crewed just like we have with our two stations. So we'll see about that. Anyway, uh, it's been mostly a lunar-centric sort of episode. And uh, we fulfilled our missions. And next time we'll get on with, uh, with different things. Though probably still focused on the moon. When is the next Mars transfer window? I don't even have it listed here. Maybe we should do that. Uh, sort of dependent on one of the missions that we are currently sending there, though. Uh, it's 580 days, because we're sending uh, the Mars sample return missions in Mars Base 1. And of course, we want to make sure that that all happens before we send something else. And it looks like we will. It's a long ways away, the next Mars transfer window. So on that note, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.